Um, so this video will be about uh, why homeless people don't just go get a job. Um, I, at the end, I'll explain why I didn't get a job. It's My reasons are pretty complicated, a lot more complicated than most. Um, so yeah, first off, thanks for all the subs, the likes, the comments. I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, thanks for the tips, Venmo, Cash App, PayPal. I appreciate every single one of you. Thanks for the Patreon. I've been neglecting the Patreon. Sorry about that. I got a lot of shit going on right now, man. Like, you know, my car ain't running and all that shit. So I'll get back to it. I guess I'll wear my hair now for this one. I was getting so many compliments on my hair yesterday. I, uh, I'm a fucking... Maybe I shouldn't be doing them with my hair down. But Jesus Christ, it's so hot. I mean, I'm like... <laughs> I'm sweating, bro, but, um, and yeah, before people start accusing me of being on drugs, dude, it's 80 degrees out, my car's parked in the sun, I'm getting barely any wind through here, so, yeah, I'm, I'm hot, bro, so, um, now, the reason homeless people don't just go get a job is pretty complicated, but, um, and it, it varies from person to person, but one of the main reasons is because, when you're homeless you pretty much have to make money every single day you can't just you know you can't just go um apply for you know you can take a day off and go apply for a bunch of jobs and then even if you get a job you're not going to get paid for like two weeks so like what are they supposed to do for two weeks work for free you know what i mean um that's one of the major hurdles right there um another one is <clears throat> A lot of these people have just never ever done any anything like that. They've never even attempted to get a job because some of them have been on the streets since they were so young that, you know, they couldn't get a job at that point. And then by the time they're old enough to get a job, they're so adjusted to making money on the street that it's like, it, you know, it's just completely foreign to them. You know what I mean? Um, and it's, you know... Truthfully, a lot of jobs, in my opinion, are not even worth having. That's why they're all complaining, like, oh, nobody's hiring. Dude, let me tell you something. If you were paying right, every everyone would be trying to get a job there, you know? Like, they're paying wages that nobody can live on and and wondering why nobody wants to work for them, you know? Like, it's, it's simple math, you know what I'm saying? It's, you can blame everyone else, but the truth is you're, you're underpaying people. And that's why nobody wants to work for you. When, when we used to, um, when I was doing sod and we were, I was getting paid a percentage of every job, we hired someone. Like our boss basically talked us into it. But, and you know, every once in a while on a big job, we would bring people out. But we were paying people well. So whenever we needed people to work, they we we didn't have no problem finding nobody to work. And we're doing hard labor, throwing sod in the Florida sun. It's hot as fuck. You're getting filthy. You're getting covered in dirt and sweat and mud. And, like, we never had no problem getting nobody to work because we're paying good. So it's like, <laughs> you know, these people who, who complain about nobody wants to work, dude, pay better. And trust me, you're going to find plenty of people to work, you know? It's ridiculous, dude. But so... <clears throat> um. And, you know, a lot of homeless people are just, some of them are kind of nuts. They're going to have a real hard time sitting in one place, taking a bunch of orders from someone who, you know, that they don't really respect. It's like, just because you hired someone, that doesn't mean you really earn their respect. And a lot of people on the street, they don't just give their respect out like it's nothing. Because you know, out on the street, you know, not everyone deserves respect, you know what I'm saying, and, um, and they, they see these people, and they're thinking to themselves, this guy could never handle a fraction of the shit that I've handled, and I'm sitting here taking orders from him, he should be taking orders from me, you know, that's the kind of shit people think, because when you live in that, when you live in that life out in the wild, basically, you kind of resort back to your animalistic thinking, like, um, it's like survival of the fittest out there in a lot of ways, and 
um, you know, it's it can, it can be a bit savage at times. So when they, when these people end up in some some job taking orders from someone who they feel like they should not be taking orders from, it's it's tough. Um, and just a lot of people on the street, they've been betrayed by society in a lot of ways. Society, no one's ever taken care of these people. Um, they, no one's ever done them right. You know what I mean? There's a lot of messed up people out there who have zero compassion. And um, when you when you spend your whole life dealing with those type of people, and there, I knew people on the street who never met anyone who was ever decent to them in any way, shape, or form. So, like, they've just kind of given up on even trying to be normal because, you know, they, they've just... They have no trust. They And they, they have no reason to trust this society because this society has done them wrong at every turn since as far back as they can remember you know I mean some people just come from messed up homes where their parents abuse the shit out of them the, you know the, their parents were f completely out of their fucking minds there's people out on the street who've been out there since they were like kids you know because they just they would rather go take their chances out on the street than to live with these crazy people who are abusing them and hurting them you know what I mean so yeah, I mean, think about that. These are kids going out on the street in New York City. They're choosing that over a warm bed and, and you know what I'm saying? So you can just imagine the type of shit they're dealing with. I knew people on the street who, they were so, they were already messed up when they were kids from their parents. Then they get out on the street. If you're a kid out on the street, there's predators out there who are going to see you as a target. I, I wasn't a kid out on the street. I was an adult, but I looked young. And I can tell you one thing. <laughs> I, there was people, dudes, you know, who, like, they'll try to hit on you or whatever. And when you're when you're not into it, they'll, they'll get all upset and angry. And I'm just thinking, thinking to myself, like, imagine if I was a kid, how this guy would react. I'm a... I'm, I'm a a grown man and this dude's you know what I mean like I'm an actual threat to this guy imagine if if he's dealing with a fucking kid who's not a threat and I'm I'm seeing these people and I'm seeing these situations out there and I'm thinking how the hell do kids survive past a year out here with these kind of these kind of people out here so you know these kids who end up on the street they first of all they're screwed up from their parents then they're dealing with all these abusive lunatics out on the street who they just play they see homeless people as like a target you know what i'm saying it's like a safe target for, for them to unload on um and th if it's a kid it's like what, what's the kid gonna do you know what i mean like me i can i can fight back so i didn't have to deal with much but i would just i'd be thinking this would occur to me on the street like how do these kids survive with these fucking people out here, you know? And those those people aren't even homeless. Those are quote-unquote normal people. And then you got the lunatic homeless people out there who, you, you know, they don't hesitate to abuse, use and abuse everyone around them. So it's like, you know, they were messed up by their parents. Of course, I got some shit going on right next to me every time I try to film a fucking video. So, you know, they were abused as they were kids in their home. Then they get out on the street. They're abused by the homeless people. They're abused by the normal people. They're, you know, they've been neglected and abused their whole lives. If they try to go to the shelter, they're basically putting themselves in jail voluntarily. Where, and I can tell you one thing, the people who run these shelters, they're like the most compassionless people on earth. Because a lot of the times they hire them you know right off the like it, they these are people who like were staying in the shelter and they like give them a job to work there and it's like so you can imagine there's some abusive crazy people in there too because at one point i did kind of give up and i was like all right fuck this i'm going to the shelter i'm getting a job i'm gonna be a normal person i went to the shelter one night and that was enough for me to be like i'm going back out on the street because i'm not gonna give these these fucked up people any type of power over me you know what i mean because they're they can't handle it these people couldn't you know i wouldn't put them in charge of 
taking care of a parakeet. Forget about, you know, all these mentally ill people on the street who end up in these shelters, like... <laughs> And you know, a lot of these people, in my opinion, they weren't born mentally ill. They've just been so, <laughs> the, the world has been so fucking cruel to them and has done them so wrong. And yet, maybe a lot of the times they reacted in a, in a way that fucked their karma up even worse because these people don't believe in nothing. They, you know, they, they, don't, they don't have any faith or belief in anything. So they're thinking like, the way everyone else is acting, I'm gonna I'm gonna act like that too, and they're just basically digging themselves deeper into karmic debt, and like, you know, so they end up, it, they end up just creating such a a hellscape of a life that it's like, you know what I mean? Like, there's really no escape for it, and you expect someone like that to just go, I mean start taking orders at McDonald's like th these people probably can't stand still for more than fucking a half hour at a time you know um I'm pausing this and coming back to it because I've got some like I sit like all day there's been nothing happening around me I'm like all right let me film a video and of course right when I start filming it fucking I mean let me fucking come back to it Okay, so the annoying thing that was happening is not happening. There's, there's some, there was some dude just talking on his phone right outside my window. Like, so, um, <clears throat> so yeah, these people, and you know, it, 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 nothing applies to everyone, but so there was people out there who, everything's just been so hard and unfair in their life that they've turned into a bitter person who's, now they're acting like a, an asshole out on the street and they're abusing people and it's like it's this circle of you know and and they just then there's in order for them to start living like a norm, normal person there's such a long chain of events that they would have to go through that you know, they, a lot of them really do need help, you know what I'm saying? And I mean real help. These shelter systems and all this stuff going on, I, I can't speak for every city, but I guarantee it's all the same. In New York City, these homeless programs and all this shit, it ain't about helping nobody. It's about washing money. It's about moving money from here to there. It's about people taking care of, you know, like... Cuomo's sister was like running in in charge of like the homeless thing you know what I mean and it's like she's getting paid like half a mil probably a, a year to you know what I'm saying it's all bullshit bro it's not about helping anyone it really isn't if you saw the shelter system in New York City it, there's obviously not much money going into it but all the people all the like executives who are working for these companies are being paid a, a ridiculous amounts of money I'm talking millions and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and it, it's you know they're just they're, they're, they're all making themselves rich and it, it ain't about helping anyone so nine times out of, out of ten you're way better off out on the street than than in the shelter unless you've got some sort of steady job and you can just put up with the shelter for a couple of months but a lot of these people ain't got it like that um, you know what I mean? Especially to be paying New York City rent. And yeah, they'll, they'll, every once in a while, they'll take someone out of the shelter and put them in some room somewhere. But nine times out of ten, they kind of just shove all the homeless people into the Bronx. They buy these buildings in the Bronx and just fill it up with homeless people. And it's basically just, you know, it's, it's another, it's a new form of hell for them to live in, <laughs> you know. But, um... So yeah, um, one of the main reasons they a lot of these people don't just go get a job is because they just don't give a fuck anymore. They don't care. They they have no interest in taking part in this society. They're filled with rage. They're filled with hate, and they got every right to be. Some of them are so fucked up that they can barely even like. I mean, there's people out on the street who don't even. They haven't attempted to even clean themselves in, in sometimes decades you can get on the train sometimes and this has happened to me I get, I'll get i see an empty car I'm like oh shit there's an empty car this is I've learned 
to be a little more careful now. You get on the empty train and you look over and there's someone laying on the bench. Actually, you smell them before you see them. And then you're trapped in this car <laughs> until the next stop. And I shit you not, these people smell like you've never smelled anything like it. Just imagine if someone stopped showering 10 years ago and then on top of that has been pissing their pants. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even kidding you. It's like... The this, this smell is almost enough to like make your eyes tear. Like th there's like a gas coming off of these people. I sh I'm not kidding you. And it's like, you know, you think they were born that way? Like, dude, th we live in a really screwed up society, bro. And, you know, people can say like, uh, you know, it's not society's fault. I've got a job and this and that. You got to realize you didn't come up in anywhere near the circumstances that a lot of these people came up in. I mean, what, uh, imagine if your parents have been, uh, like, raping you since you were a fucking child. Dude. You know what I'm saying? These these kind of people end up out on the street. What are you going to, like, you know what I'm saying? You, you expect someone like that, and then they get out on the street, and they're dealing with all this other shit. You expect someone like that to just be able to just function normally and trust people? They, they, I mean, they've never even... They never had a chance, you know what I mean? So, and I'd see people out on the street, and to me, I'm seeing their whole past, but a lot of people don't see that. They just see some, like, oh, this guy's crazy, he's, he's a shit, this and that. But I'm seeing these people, and I'm thinking to myself, bro, you think he was just, you think he just chooses to be that way? You think, like, he wants to not shower for eight months at a time, and to be walking around with clothes that are disintegrating off his body like you really think this guy fucking chose to be that way you know what i'm saying like i mean i guess in in the long run it, everything is kind of a choice but you you, you got to realize that it, things have been happening to these people pe people from such a young age that they you know what i'm saying they weren't thinking much and by the time now they're an adult man this shifter's right in the fucking way and they can kind of think more it's like it, they're just too fucked up at this point you know um <clears throat> trying to think of some other reasons and the other reason it's like what are they gonna do what like they're gonna walk into hey can you you're hiring this is the, where these are people that they're filthy they you know what i mean um and you know people do judge by appearance you know like maybe they shouldn't but they do and the other thing is, I've thought to myself, like, yeah, if I ever end up trying to, like, buy a huge piece of land and build, like, a commune or whatever, I'd hire a lot of these homeless people, but... And I'd be thinking to myself, right off the bat, having them work for me is going to be hard, because a lot of them, they're not going to be very, like, receptive to it, you know? So whatever, like, it, these people need compassion, They, you know? If you're running a fucking profit driven thing that you're expecting these people to be just you know right on point and doing everything right it ain't gonna work like that you know what I mean you're gonna have to have a lot of patience and a lot of compassion and try to help evolve them past all the shit they've been through so it's like you know most companies can't can't even handle hiring people like this um, so yeah I guess that about covers it for other people now the reason I w did, didn't get a job is you, you can watch why I was homeless part one through seven but basically what it comes down to is every time I would get a job I just felt deep in my heart that God was trying to get me out of there yeah I don't know how else to explain it but you, you, at some point you gotta real, realize you're on the wrong path and that's what happened to me and when all said and done I wasn't I wasn't meant to be doing that type of shit because you know what I'm saying it just it just that's the way it went if you think that, that I ever had a problem holding the job you're wrong you can ask anyone anyone I ever fucking worked for they'd be happy to hire me back right now you know so I mean it just for me, every time I'd go get a job, things would things would be happening to where they that weren't really in my control that were directing me to 
out of that job, you know? Do you think I really just wanted to quit that? I had an easy job at Belmont at the horse track. It was an easy job. It was the easiest job I ever had. We, we literally would take a half hour break every hour. I liked everyone I worked with. I hung out with a, like, it was like hanging out with friends. We had a bunch of fun, funny people working with us. We'd be smoking weed all day. Like, we'd be playing, we called it leaf truck hockey, where we'd be, it's a long story, but we'd be having fun. We'd be making fun of each other, smoking weed, wrestling, fucking playing leaf truck hockey, fucking, it was a fun, easy job, and I liked it, but I also felt that, you know, it, 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 <laughs> For me to do that, I kind of felt let, like I was taking the easy path, I was taking the soft path, I was taking the path that wasn't going to lead to my best self, you know? That's the best way I can explain it. And if you think that was easy to quit that fucking job, you are mistaken, because it was the best job I ever had in my life. And if I was still working there now, I'd be, big, I'd be getting paid thousands of dollars a week and I would I wouldn't have to do shit because I'd be like you know it's a union job I'd be high up like you know I'd be high up on the food chain by now and I'd be probably just chilling somewhere in Belmont and getting paid a shitload of money to do very little you know what I mean but that's just not it, it's it's not God didn't put me on earth to do that I, I don't know how else to explain it man fucking shit I'll be back yeah so <clears throat> basically in a nutshell the reason I the reason I stopped trying to do the whole normal life thing was because I felt that God had a different purpose for me that was going to be harder and more challenging that if I had the balls I would accept it and I did I answer to God I don't answer to people I don't answer to what's comfortable I don't answer it you know what I mean I answer to God bro so if you know if you got a pro problem with what I've done to take it up with God that's the, you know <laughs> so <clears throat> you know and then the last job I had my buddy got me a job on Wall Street where I'm trying to get people alone take people get people to take a loan over the phone it was going fine at first and then our boss was like he was just give, giving us such shit leads that there was no way for me to really make money. And I was just like, this is it, bro. I don't, you know, I'm going to sit here and work for it. It was like a commission-based job. I've got no chance to really get sales because he's giving us these beat-up-ass leads from six months ago that we've called 5,000 times. And it's useless. It's pointless. So that was that. Uh, and the last straw with that one, I I managed to stumble into a, a half a million dollar loan this guy wanted, which my commission would have been 10k, and the loan ended up not going through. Like four or five times, it went back and forth. Like, okay, we're doing the loan. Two days later, okay, we're not doing it. So, hey, Joey, yeah, you're gonna make 10 grand. Two days later, oh no, you're not gonna make 10 grand. Three days later, oh, yo, it's gonna go through. You're gonna get 10 grand. Uh, two hours later, oh, it it didn't go through. The the fucking lender doesn't want to do it. So I, it it, it, that, it was a wrap. I, I was like, this is it. God's telling me to get the fuck out of here, and it's it, that that was that. Um, and if you think I didn't want to keep that job, I, you're wrong again. Because when it was going good, it was going good. Um, but I was also back on heroin, and you know what I mean not having that job kind of forced me to get off heroin it, it's watch my, my why I was homeless videos if you want the full story but it just wasn't meant to be that way and I go with the flow you know what I'm saying so um, I guess that about covers that now I this video ended up being three parts so what a pain in the ass I'm gonna have to try to stitch this all together and shit um, there was another point I wanted to make that I can't seem to think of it now. Oh, so my advice is if, you, if you're kind of fresh on the street, go whatever. Make, make money with whatever way you can. If you're trying to go back to a normal life, get, get to the closest city, get yourself a bicycle, and start doing Uber Eats, DoorDash, and all that shit. Do them all at once if you really want to make money. Because... And just take the good deliveries. I'll give y'all some tips on Uber. Maybe I should make a video about that. Because I did Uber for about a year. Uber Eats. And there's a very specific way to do it if you want to make money. Which it took me about a year to figure it out. But 
if you if you do it any other any other way, it's not going to be w worth doing. Um, I guess I can just run it down real quick. I don't think this would make a whole video anyway, but maybe I'll make a separate video too. But in order to make money with Uber, what you need to do is only take the big tippers. That's what I did. Obviously, you're going to have to be a better worker um, because if you're going to take the high tippers, they tend to be a little tougher to deal with. They complain more, this and that. So you're going to have to, you know, do a good job. Don't, don't forget the drinks. Don't fucking be stopping to get gas in the middle of the delivery do you know do it well and if you just keep taking the big tippers and you keep getting high ratings uber is gonna keep throwing you the big tippers that's how it seemed to me but then there was there was other days where they wouldn't be throwing me nothing worth taking i'd be sitting there all day and i'd end up taking like three deliveries because i don't give a fuck i'm not taking shit deliveries. I'm not dealing with these people who tip fucking two bucks on a 15 mile drive. You know, why the fuck would I? Let some other fucking idiot do that. I'm, you know what I mean? My, I'm doing the job well, so you better fucking pay me a lot to do it. You know what I mean? So that was my attitude with Uber. So literally, I would reject seven out of ten deliveries they sent to me. Literally, my, my accept rate was about 30%, but my driver rating is like 99%. I had like very few compl complaints and the people who did complain kind of had a right to complain because things sometimes my temper gets the best of me and I'm giving the people attitude and shit so you know every once to, and every once in a while I'd have a little conflict with the people and they would um, they'd give me they'd give me like a bad rating but I had so many good ratings that it didn't fucking matter my my percentage was like 99% it was never it was never lower than 98% that was the lowest my rating was ever at on Uber so um so there's the tips for Uber do the job well do it to the best of your ability only take the big tippers and if you're running DoorDash and Uber and what what like if you're running multiple apps simultaneously which is what a lot of people do, then, yeah, you're going to be... You, you really don't got to take the shit deliveries because you got two apps shooting fucking, you know, offers at you all day. So that's that's what you do, man. Run, bo run both of them simultaneously. I think there's a third one, too, but I can't think of it now. There's Uber Eats, DoorDash, and... I don't know. There's another one, too. But, yeah, run them all. Fuck them. And only take the good orders and you'll make a lot of money. I knew people on the street in New York who were making over a thousand bucks a week doing that shit. So, you know, don't don't let the street turn you into one of these people who 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 is kind of stuck out there. You know what I mean? Um and yet that's another reason a lot of people don't get the jobs. They're they're fucking addicted to drugs and they they you know, they need these drugs. They really do. They they need a rehab. I was able to kick it cold turkey on the street, and but I'm I'm not trying to brag, but I ain't the average person. I got an iron will. You know what I'm saying? When I make a decision to do something, ain't not nothing it, it is gonna fucking stop me. Nothing is gonna stop me, and that's how I am. If you kicking dope cold turkey on the street with people all around you who have dope, who, who are willing to give it to you for free. That ain't easy, bro. If you can do that, there ain't much you can't do. So, I guess that's it for this video. We'll see if it makes any sense. This is like three parts of... I gotta stitch this shit all together and... Yeah, we'll see, so... Um, thanks for the subs, the likes, the comments. I appreciate you. Thanks for the tips. Venmo, Cash App, PayPal. I appreciate you. Thanks for the Patreon support. I appreciate you. And I'm sorry I've been neglecting it, but... I'm gonna get I'm gonna get back on it ASAP. So um, I should only be stuck here for about another week. We'll see. So um, I'll try to get another video up the day after tomorrow. Oh, my birthday's coming up, February 25th. Maybe I'll end up putting a video up on that day. I don't even know what day it is today. All right, so I'll see y'all on the next one.